Hello and welcome to episode three of A Conversation With and today I am joined with Mitch Davis and it's weird because I'm not with Chris um, but I think I've upgraded slightly. Um, how are you doing Mitch, you good? Very well mate, thank you for having me on, I appreciate it. That's alright, um, so I thought I'd throw something random out there. Um, so I was going back and trying to do a little research on you because I think I've met you in passing, one a few wrestling shows. Um, okay. One of them was WrestleFalls. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, and that goes way back. And you actually won the Royal Rumble, which was very. It was it was nice to see because I kind of met you, and then I see you throw someone over the top rope. I was like, oh, that's lovely. <laughs> I was that was uh, Dagenham. It was it was indeed. Yeah, um, yeah. That, that's always a good highlight of mine. To be fair, I oh, always really? refer back to that. I always refer back to that show um, when people say to me, "What's the most sort of out there thing you've done?" Right, and I think that that power bomb over to the top to win the match. Always, always sticks in my head. To be fair, so yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, it was, it was, it was great because <laughs> you wasn't on the rest of the show, um, no. and you were such a surprise entrant. And um, so, I'd, for those who don't really know how British wrestling works or like independent wrestling shows, they have about six matches on the card, five or six matches, and then they'll either end up with a rumble sort of thing or like a, a three man tag. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and that's how they always like finish the show, and it's always a great finish to uh, every, every show. And we got Mitch winning and literally the place went crazy it was it was a good ex- you know it must be mad for you i can always remember that because i i had that was the first show i ever did for wrestle force right and um the promoter oliver peace he yeah. went to wrestling school on a friday night and, the, and this was a saturday so i can remember i went to his training school just to meet a few guys in uh Rayleigh, essex mm-hmm. and he just said to I mean, he was like, look, I'm doing a, a show tomorrow in Dagenham. I'm going to run a, uh, a little Royal Rumble Battle Royal at the end of it. I'm going to just come and take part. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, no problem. And it went, when I went, it wasn't until I got there that they said, we're going to use you as a pr- surprise entrant right at the end. Um, and just go and do, do your thing, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, and it's, it did. It was, it was quite mental because it's one of those as well. You don't think people are going to know who you are. Yeah. And people reacted as well. So, you know, you're a bit, I think, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm a big dude, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I do stand it in that way. But it is it is also nice just to see people react when they have no idea that you're going to turn up and they've never seen you in that promotion before. So there's a good chance they're going to be like, who's this dude? All right, this yeah. big, but, but they didn't, they reacted, so it was good. Yeah, I mean, I was there. I think I was a second, a couple of rows from the front because um, yeah. I was trying to get some photography stuff going. Um, but I got too engrossed in what I was actually watching to actually take all my photos. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've I'd, I'd now learnt my lesson. Um, so I make sure I kind of keep one eye on the camera, one eye. <laughs> um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. But I try. it's weird because you try and watch it through a lens uh, yeah. and it, it's just not the same, is it? It, it winds nah. me up. So like, if I'm there, I want to experience it. I can do photos another time. It's a bit yeah. like, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just social life nowadays, isn't it? Like you yeah. look back at the night is and you don't have a camera in sight and the feel of it. And now, obviously, people record everything, you know, exactly. as much as they can uh, for their own memories. But at the same time, you'll never get that feeling of jumping out of your seat when somebody's music hits, you know, rather than just having your phone and be like, oh, you know, I'd, I'd rather be arms up, you know, yeah. popping, <laughs> popping if that, you know, the wrestling yeah, term. Yeah. So, you know, and uh, I've, I've always been that kind. I would say I, was, I started watching wrestling back in the 90s. So uh, for me, that attitude era pop will always be more yeah. relevant to what you get now, you know? So exactly. Um, yeah. I, I, I see what you mean with the camera thing. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, I do, um, I'll speak to you about more stuff after, but um, yeah. I, I was going to say the summit that the reason I threw it out at the beginning was, um, so I first see you at WrestleForce. Um, and now, now I do commentary for DKW. Um Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm starting to do some uh, commentary for them. Um, I've done some photos for them. But, so you know Lucas. Yes. I know um, Lucas very well. Yes. And it, it's, it's so strange because um, I haven't told him yet. So he actually doesn't know I'm doing this uh, this chat with you. But, okay. Um, so I did a commentary for DKW with uh, Jazzy Josh. Um, okay. And I was going back and I was looking through a couple of, like, some of your matches. I found some on Daily Motion on YouTube. And it blew my mind that you was in a match with uh, Lewis Barrett and then Lucas was the ref. I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, I just, it's the weirdest thing. No, no, I, I know them. And then I was yeah. like, it was, it's, it's just mad. Like how you know these, someone knows someone in wrestling is weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is, mate. It's crazy. Um, 
the thing for me is because I'm originally from Wolverhampton, as you say, mm-hmm. just outside. Um, I didn't even have a clue that wrestling schools existed in that area. And when I moved to Essex, there were so many different wrestling schools. So um, I was wrestling for a while. And then one of the promoters who actually runs a wrestling school in my hometown of Tipton, which is up north, which I never even knew was there, yeah, uh, did a ring job down here. And he's like, yeah, we've been there for the last 15 years. <laughs> and I'm just a bit like, how did I not know that? You know what I mean? And I actually, he's good mates with a friend who I know. And I was like, bro, I've never actually ever seen this person in person that yeah. I could have ever spoken to him when I lived back up north. So, you know, it, it is crazy the people you know. Uh, it's such a small world, believe it or not. I mean, you work so many different shows and you'll be like, oh, I know you from that show or I know you from that show. And you do, you, you do. there is a big community and uh, it's it's good. It's fun. Yeah, it's very, it's very weird. I mean, I literally live around the corner to one of the guys that was um, in the DKW show that I'd done. And I think yeah. I must have walked past him about four or five times and never said hello. Obviously, I didn't know him. And then yeah. all of a sudden, I'm sitting next to him in a, in a car going to a wrestling I was like, what the hell? Like, it, it's, it's the weird experience. For someone that's not doing yeah. wrestling, um, you know, for it's a weird experience. So for you, it must be like that all the time. You go, oh, I haven't seen you in months at this, this last show. And Yeah, I've I've had some really starstruck moments. I mean, I think my biggest starstruck moment was shaking hands with Scott Hall. Oh, wow. Say, recently passed away, which yeah. is such a shame. But um, I just... I tagged along with uh, my the guy who taught me how to wrestle. Uh, he did a show in Norwich mm-hmm. uh, for uh, World Association of Wrestling, WAW. Scott Hall was their commissioner, and I was able to go backstage, meet everybody. I mean, people, Mr. Atler, Ken Anderson was there, you know. Um, <laughs> wow. Like, mate, just like big names, you know. And I can remember Ken Anderson just came up to me and was like, hi, I'm Ken, in his accent, shot my hand, and then was just like, you are huge, sort of thing. Like, <laughs> he's saying that to me, and I'm just like, mate, you, I, th- I think you're the big guys, yeah. you know. Scott, Scott Hall's a big dude, though. You know, he... Uh, but he's same, same kind of guy, nice and sweet, down to earth. Yeah. He's happy to talk to me. And so, you know, you're a bit like, I'm just this little fish, and he's this superstar at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah. He's happy to just say, you know, nice to meet you, quick chat, what am I doing there? You know, and, yeah, and he, he said the same thing to me. I'd look forward to seeing you again in the future. I never got to, but... Um, yeah, it's just just mad moments when you just walk away and you just sit there and think, I've just sat with like Razor Ramon, you know, like <laughs> yeah, it's it is, it's, it's it's crazy, it is, and it's such a small world. Like I say, you know, it's things are a lot closer than you realise. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it did blow my mind. I said it, it was just when I was going back and I was like, so you tag with Lewis Barrett and I'm looking, I'm thinking, I know that ref. I look and I heard the voice. I was, I was like, it's Lucas. It, I just, I'm so used to seeing him wrestle. Or, like, get yeah. ready for promotion. I didn't expect him to be in a ref uniform. I was like, that is... It was the weirdest feeling. Um, but, yeah, so it we'll get on to a little bit of uh, how you started. So I've actually got a bit of a biography of you. I guess okay. a biography of you. Um, okay. So let see how much of this is true. So your debut match was in East Tilbury. That's correct. Yeah, yes. with uh, Phil Powers. Uh, that is correct, Yes. Yeah, yeah, you're looking a bit like how'd you know this? Um, <laughs> um, no, no, I'm just, I'm just trying to think back. To be honest with you, like, I mean, it was only 2014, but at the same time, I took that many bumps in that time. I'm a bit, you know, <laughs> ooh, a bit blasé, but, but yeah, I did a, a, a traditional, traditional British rounds match with him. Right. And uh, how was that? Because yeah. for those who don't know, the rounds one is—is is it three minutes or five minutes? I, it's definitely not five minutes. It's not. I was going to say that'd be quite like <laughs> if it was five minutes, I didn't do that. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have been able to work that long, to be honest. I was, I was totally green. Like, right. I had no idea what I was doing pretty much in there. You know, I'm not ashamed to say that because everybody gets that way. Everybody starts from the bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think I think we did four three-minute rounds, like a 12-minute match. Yeah. Um, and we had two seconds. It's like a bit like boxing where on the break, you'd have the guy come in and just talk you through things and just like, you know, work with you. I had uh, Paul Sinner, who used to do a lot of work for like WrestleForce, and like his name was Riker. Um, right. um, uh, he did a lot of work for Phil as well back in the day, and I can't quite remember who Phil's second was. Um, but yeah, it was it, it was a learning curve, you know. It was because uh, I know it, they, they fare different to um, actual wrestling matches, because you said because there's there's like a two or three minute round, and then it stops for a couple of seconds, and then you go yeah. again. Yeah. Um, as opposed to a normal wrestling or wrestling as we know it now 
Yeah. It's just flat out for like five, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. So did you find it, as you're just coming up, did you find it difficult to kind of get momentum back as you, after a round? Because it was more, um, what I, the positive I'll take from it, it, it allowed me to get my breath back at the end of the day. You know, it allowed me to recover, um, you know, set myself again, um, you know, listen to what the person's telling me. Because like I say, I was completely new to it. So like my second, who was Paul at the time, he he was just like, you know, just relax. You know, you don't, don't have to be doing this. You don't have to be doing this. Just chill out a bit. Just, you know, just take a deep breath. Yeah. Um, and then as you say, in regards to the momentum side of things, if you have got the hook at hand and you're ready to hit something big and that bell goes, they pull you apart. And so exactly that where you get Phil then in that situation where he's like, I've survived that. I've now had a breather. I can now go again. Yeah. And because he's got such experience, he can use his experience to get the better of me, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's, that's the thing in regards to first bell to the end bell matches. Um, you know, it's just hell for leather. Go and win your fight. Get the one, two, three, get the DQ, whatever you need to get, get the submission and uh, get the hell out of there with a win. Yeah, you know, so. exactly. So do you, yeah. what watch, what way do you prefer? Do you prefer the, uh, bell to bell or, or rounds? Uh, 100% bell to bell. You know, uh, there's, there's no, like, it's, I'm a big, if you speak to, I mean, a lot of people know this with me. I'm a big believer in like realism in mm -hmm. wrestling. Um, things have to make sense. Yeah. Um, if, if they don't, I'll just, I, sh I don't shoot it down like quite arrogant. I shoot it down as in like, why are we doing this? You know? Yeah, yeah. And a big person who taught me that was like Lewis Howley, mm -hmm. um, the playboy who's now over in America in NXT, he you is, know, yeah. and uh, you now fair play to the dude. He's a great guy. Um, and he learned me a lot when I worked with him uh, in that retrospect, you know, just yeah. Mitch, what, why are you doing this? You're such a big guy. Why, why are you letting somebody do this to you? And so in regards to the bell to bell, matches it gets to a point where you learn how to tell a story more yeah you know as say with the british rounds you're building that story and then the break you've got to start again you're building that story the break you've got to start again so um doing it in that way um yeah i'll always be bell to bell and you can bring the crowd up take them down all you want in a uh, bell to bell match in a yeah. rounds match they might be popping and then that bell rings, and then you have to take a break, and you lose them again. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you got you, it's a bit harder because you've got to try and keep them intact at all times. And uh, yeah, I definitely got a bell for bell, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I can say I've seen so I've seen a few people do rounds, um, and it's like an art form, isn't it? As you said, it the matches. So you kind of you'd lose interest, but the minute they kind of locked horns again, it was the way they done it. They it wasn't just natural. Go back to a, you know like a tie up yeah. and. So yeah, that was it. Was really weird, but um, I prefer, as you said, like bell to bell because I think I could just get more engrossed in it. Yeah, um, it is. It and it's you know exactly that. Like as you say with the Johnny Saint and the Hackens. I mean Johnny Saint, one of the bloody hell, one of the most best people to work with in, in regards to psychology and wrestling. So mm -hmm. especially like um, old school British wrestling. So he'd understand exactly. Like he, he's just one of those guys who've got it, you know. And, yeah not crack, like perfected his art and that's the reason why he's still up like he's still highly spoken of today you know and you not you expect nothing but the best from people like that yeah yeah um all right so you done started your training what 2015 ish 2014 march 20 no uh about august 2014 i think it was how yeah. was that the first time so i'm assuming did you start on mats or was you straight in a ring uh, straight in the ring, I was. Oh wow, you you got a privilege. Uh, most people that I've spoken yeah. to before always yeah. get, I, get um, blue mats. <laughs> I got classed as a special one, as they oh. like to call it. Um, <laughs> no, so what it was, uh, I went to a school in Loughton in Essex. Uh, it's it was was then called Essex Wrestling Academy. I know there's another one of those now in Rainham, mm -hmm. um, but it was run by Phil Powers, and he had his own ring set up because he builds them as part of his work anyway so he yeah. just built one for a training ring and um yeah within after the warm-up within 20 minutes i was learning how to flat bump back bump uh you name it i was learning it mm -hmm. believe it or not he learned me how to bump before i could even lock up or anything like that so you know and it was yeah the first training session the one thing I, the one thing what hurt me the most was the ropes yeah 
I'll we'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, killed me, man. Like, <laughs> absolutely killed me. So when you learn to bump, as I said, so the people that I've spoken to you about before have always had this, they, they learn, learn on mats. So they're, they're like um like gym mats yeah uh, you know so they're like a dkw y- yes yeah. um and there's not much bounce in them they there's not a lot of give um yeah, yeah and and they just they look uncomfortable so when people yeah. bump on them then they go and say they're bumped in a ring which got a bit more give they're more relaxed so is yeah. do you think is that a, do you think that's the mental 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 side of it as if they can bump okay. on something harder or um Yes and no. Um, okay. I think for the simple fact of if you're safe, mm-hmm. um, you can bump on anything. Yeah. Like uh, I think that's that's the best way to put it. Um, a good thing, I learned this a lot from DKW when I went there, knowing how to land with, what's the word, like not elegance, but a bit more control. Yeah. Because you sort of know that you're hitting a mat, like not a wrestling ring. But at the same time, it also – learned you how to sell the bumps if that makes sense when you get in a wrestling ring because you sort of know what a hard mat feels like yeah um it's like where i where i wrestle for now when i go to their training school they're on mats yeah you know and it's it's hard it's intense but it's when you as you say when you get in the wrestling it's not the fact that you're so much schooled to be able to bump in the ring it's just more the fact that i think it learns you how to it gives you that selling point as well because you know that the effect that you're going to hit the mat, you know, you're going to like you're hitting that bump really hard because it's not an actual gym mat. You've got that tiny bit of bounce. Mm-hmm. You can then sort of learn how to sell off, off from it and stuff like that. You know, um, yeah. that's the way I look at it. I don't think there's too much of a difference to be honest with you. Okay. In a wrestling with a gym mat. Um, I mean, I have done wrestling. I have wrestled in rings uh, where we haven't put any canvas on at all. We've just hit them the boards mm-hmm. uh, and we did that just purely on the fact of again sort of teaching us to get across from that psychological thing that mental thing where you're not going to put your hands down and potentially break your wrists you know if if you can if you can bump on a solid hard wooden board yeah you can bump on anything and that led me to taking one of my biggest bumps i've ever taken in wrestling uh, which was for dkw actually oh wow uh, yeah so that was just because it sort of gave me that edge i can bump on this Concrete floor, it's not going to hurt me. And yeah, it absolutely yeah. killed. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so. So. Yeah, it was uh, it's fun at the time. Yeah, I th- the adrenaline keeps you going, doesn't it? It's, yeah, exactly, mate. Um, so you were talking about hitting the ropes. I think a lot of people that I've spoke to, um, they've always said there's two things that they hate doing. One, taking the first, like, big bump in a ring. Yep. And uh, the next thing's hitting their ropes for the first time. Um, which one was worse? Oh, hitting the ropes, mate. Really? 100%. <laughs> like, mate, when I first took my bumps in the ring, I was flip bumping, front bumping. Within, I was just like, I want to do it. I want to do everything. Uh, I'm, I know I can land safely. Mm-hmm. I, f- I feel confident in myself. As soon as I run off them ropes, just it's just the, the pure force. You know, it's you don't realise how much they impact your back. You know, yeah. um, if somebody asks me to run the ropes for five minutes straight or just keep getting up and bumping, I'd probably just say I'll keep bumping, you oh, know. Really? Yeah, yeah. Which is quite mad, really. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I don't know why. I just always had this. I mean, I don't. I don't mind hitting the ropes now. Like my body's like, you know, trained for it. But you know, when I first, I can remember that after that very first session, I got home. It was late at night, and I was saying to my wife, took my top off, and straight away she was like, "What the hell has happened to you?" And I was like, "Why?" She's like, "Look at your back." And I thought it was just going to be like from the bumping, but it went, it was just lines, just yeah, yeah. lines from the rope. And she was like, have you actually, have you actually been wrestling or have you been somewhere else? Sort of thing, yeah, you know, yeah. a bit, you know, a bit kinky sort of thing. I was like, no, like definitely not. Um, and I just couldn't believe what they did to me. Like they absolutely tortured me. Those ropes did. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's the, it's like your own initiation into wrestling, isn't it? It's, it's one yeah, of those things yeah. like you can be, um, as I say, like you can be stretched left, right and centre and some people use it as an initiation, but I think the minute you hit their ropes and you get you do it for so long, yeah, the first couple of weeks it, that hurts. Like I've seen so many people say, like I, I want to wrestle, but hitting their ropes hurts. You know, um, it is. You, you, it's it's one of those things where before you have ever stepped in a wrestling ring, you would never in a million years think that running the ropes would hurt you. Right. You know what I mean? You <laughs> yeah, you automatically think, oh, that bump must have absolutely killed him. Oh, that forearm must have like really took his head off. Mm-hmm. But no, 
running the ropes for me and for others is definitely one of those where you where you're like geez you know what i mean so yeah yeah, yeah. um so we've gone into uh talking about kind of your training how was your first couple of training sessions with it as you said so you was in a ring was that always a thing when you trained with field it was in a ring was that his thing all the time or um yes i think the thing with me uh was he just he saw me as a guy who could basically step onto the circuit quite untrained but be such a big guy right you know what i mean like promoters could just use me as the big guy um who could pretty much go out there and just throw people around you know i didn't really need to know the basics as of yet Mm -hmm. it was a case of right we can let's just get you ring ready so like your ring awareness is good and then we'll learn you everything else as we go. Yeah. Rather than um, let's just stick you on a mat, let's get you locking up, tying up, wrist lock, you know that kind of thing. Um, and it it did work. Wow. Well, then I also I also came unstuck a lot of the times because there was a lot of times where I'd come up against workers at the end of the day, mm-hmm. and they'd get me into something. I'd be a bit like, Ugh, right, what what do I do from here? You know. So uh, it sort of worked and it didn't work. And that's where those, you say, those training sessions, they were purely strongman training sessions for me. Like the lockups had to be strong and the lockups had to be powerful, uh, throwing people around, you know, making, if I was lifting people above my head, making sure they were safe, you know, that kind of thing. Like basically make sure I was safe to step in there with somebody. Yeah. yeah really. Rather than the wrestling side of things. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it worked because, it did work because I got bookings out of it at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, you know, and um, I did come on unstuck with the the wrestling game in regards to knowing certain locks, certain holds, that kind of thing, how to reverse them and stuff. And that's where I then basically told Phil, look, I have to do, I have to do more. You know, I can't, mm. I can't just be this guy because it was making me feel bad as well because I'd, I'd go and sit in the back. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I know I'm new to the game, but then I was also like, I don't want to be this guy, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not, it's not exciting me either, yeah. you know? So, and wrestling's all about fun in my eyes. If you don't mm. motivate you, then it's, it's a higher place to be. Yeah. So you had a bit of a, you had a, so you say you had a strong start within looking menacing and stuff, but as you said, you, you had so when you went back to the locker room, did you feel like, Oh, I just, how did you feel? Like, was, was it something that, was it draining like physically? Yeah, exactly that, mate. I felt like I'm only here for one reason and one reason only. Right. To basically throw somebody about. And it's, it then, bec- as you say, like, I understand. I think at this point, I didn't really understand what the job was. Yeah. You know, it was, you know, I was, I was very much like, no, I want to be top of the card. I want to be getting the biggest pops in the world. Everybody wants that at the end of the day. But at mm-hmm. the same time, um, just trying to get a, a grasp on, why, why am I only being used for this guy? Like, I'm quite an agile guy. I can move myself around. I can I can throw myself about. Why am I this guy just standing in the middle of the ring and just throws people around? And, you know, I could be using these training. I'm, what, what I'm doing in these matches, yeah, I've done for the last eight weeks of training. Why, why aren't I learning other things in training there? Because I know what I'm going to be doing in these matches. So I was a bit, you know, it was dropping out of me really quick. Yeah. And, uh, and then that's when... Uh, Phil basically sent me to Brookside School of Wrestling in Leicester. That's when he just let me sort of grow my wings, sort of thing. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I just took, I just took it from there. And how was it transitioning from one training school to another? Was that? Oh, yeah, um, because it was run by Robbie Brookside. Yeah, um, mate, it was next level intense, man. Like you, I mean, can you always remember um, the network program Breaking Ground? Yes. Everything you saw in that, mm-hmm. we was doing in Leicester oh. at their school. So it was pure. Like, it was intense. Um, the first time I got there, um, the warm-up, it was a James Mason seminar. That's why he sent me there, Phil. Uh, he sent me there to basically go and learn off James because one of the best technical wrestlers in Britain, you know, just, just so he could show me how to work a few things with the big guy gimmick. And uh, And he did also say to me, you know, Turn up, like turn up, show yourself, you know, be respectful, and you might you might get a place there at the end of the day. Yeah. And at the end of that session, Fern, who was Robbie's partner at the time, she uh, she came up to me and said, "We'd like to offer you a place here every Sunday, full time, if you fancy it." So wow. 
I did that for a solid two years, driving to Leicester every single Sunday, um, which was, it was good, but yeah, next level. Like little things I, I learned there, like on a headlock, like you've got your butcher's lock. Mm-hmm. So if I'd have my thumb out like that, right. like people can't see this, but yeah. they would come to me and just say, the person can grab that and break your thumb. Yeah. Took it in. And it was stuff like that where you never thought that anybody would ever see. Yeah, yeah. What these people do. And that's what, as you say, just little things like that was like realism. Well, that makes sense. You know, like they can actually grab it, break my thumb, break the hold. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, it was, it learned me a lot. Brookside's did massively in the wrestling game. Yeah. Because I mean, as you said, talking about breaking ground, um, there was, there was moments when you look and you think, oh, I, that, that looks like, Un- unnecessarily yeah. needed but like in training wise you know um but obviously it's needed you know getting ring ready is one of those things i mean i've listened to interviews not just from guys in the uk um but obviously guys in america and females in america and they said the cardio wrestling cardio is different to normal life yeah. cardio cool. um, yeah 100 percent. so uh in brookside's uh school of wrestling um how was the cardio sort of training there was was that the same as breaking ground or yeah, yeah, exactly that. So basically, what they was doing over uh, uh, the, the performance center, mm-hmm. um, we was doing that. You know, it was it was simple. It was so the way they looked at it. Obviously, um, Brookside was a great stepping stone over there because he was already over there working for NXT in the yeah. performance center. So, um, what if we was going to get sent over there, or if anybody was going to get sent over to there? They had to be ready. They couldn't just walk in the door and not be able to handle it. So yeah. that was their training regime. You know, if you're going to feed up to us, you've got to be conditioned and ready to go. So, um, yeah, it was by far the hardest place I've ever trained condition-wise for mm-hmm. cardio um, because it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was crazy. Like, I mean, I'm 32 next month. Right. If, right. if I was to go there now, I won't be able to do it. Like it just it it's it's hard. It's very mm-hmm. hard work. I mean, I probably have to do it after a couple of weeks of training. Yeah. But my body is nowhere near as fit as it was back in 2015 <laughs> when this was at this time. So yeah, um, you know, it's um it, it learned me a lot and it, it made me realise if I want to do this for a career, then I have to be sat at this level all the time. Yeah. You know, so um yeah, it was good. It was good. Mm-hmm. Um, so speaking of like um, conditioning, cardio, fitness, and all that sort of stuff, uh, for those who don't follow Mitch on um, Instagram, um, I mean I have the pleasure of having you on Facebook. Um, but for those who don't uh, follow, uh, one, so you can't follow him, so you can keep up with uh, the wrestling, you know, wrestling life um, and all that. But there's something that you do that um, it really, really inspired me, and it always gives me a kick up the butt when um, when I'm thinking, oh, I'm just having a lazy day. But you posted um, a before picture um, when you started going back into the gym. Is this the most recent times? uh, Yes. Um, Yeah. And I think it's quite inspiring. Um, Yeah. I don't want to blow smoke up your butt just because you're here. But honestly, (laughs) getting them photos uh, and seeing them photos, it makes you think, do you know what? I I should be doing that. Um, How hard was that for you? Because I'm assuming, I don't want to say you put weight on, Obviously, but you said that yourself. Um, was that through COVID? Um, so um, before uh, COVID hit, mm-hmm. I hadn't wrestled. I want to say a year and a half, two years. Right. I took. I I fell out of love with the sport completely. Um, I, th- there's there's a reason why. Um, you know, and I just I just sort of sat there and just thought to myself. It's too much, you know. I'm taking on too much. I run, I run my own business, mm-hmm. um, you know. And I was, I was doing, I was doing a lot of work, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. And it, it just got too much, and I just, I couldn't keep up with both. And so I made a decision, pretty much, where um, I just said, like me and my wife wanted to buy our own house, which we live in it now, mm-hmm. believe it or not. So we, that worked, and we've had a little boy. And I just took, I moved myself away from the the wrestling game to settle down pretty much, yeah. get my, buy myself my first house, uh, get my, you know, start a family and that thing. And yeah, I, I put on way that way. I used to go to the gym. Um, like I'd always go to the gym. I mean, don't get on COVID. I, I bought myself my own little set of dumbbells. Uh, the, 
the cables, what everybody went mad for in COVID, you know, that kind of thing, like what you could do. And I did all that kind of stuff, kept myself fit, kept myself quite conditioned. I do a lot of stuff in the back garden, whether it be, um, you know, burpees, squats, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm a decorator by trade, so any tins of paint I had, you know, mm. I'd walk around holding them and stuff <laughs> like that. Like I did, and I'd, I'd be bench pressing with big, massive drums of paint. Yeah, which was a. Uh, I, I think it would always be funny for people looking in at, from other back gardens at me, just like bench pressing paintings. <laughs> but you know, it is where it is. Uh, but yeah, I was just a bit. I got into the mindset of, I've always been the kind of no excuses kind of guy, where you know, if just just do it, you know, yeah. what I mean, just get it done. And I did put on a lot of weight. Um, I didn't realise I was doing it, but I was. I, you know, I was putting on the weight. And um, I, what was the word? Um, I watched WrestleMania, the, the the WrestleMania my son was born. Uh, I think that was the performance centre when it was locked in lockdown. Okay, so it was, at the, it was at the first time of two nights? Yes, I think right. so. Um, and he'd been up all night and... Uh, I was just sitting there watching it with him because I was just, you know, he's a little baby at the time. But he'd only been born in January, so only a couple of months old. And I don't know what it was. I just had this cliche moment, you know, however it may sound. And I thought, I'd love for him just to see me wrestle one day. Like you, going back to the start where you said I had that pop for WrestleForce. Yeah. You know, I just, I'd love, my goal now, I'd love for it to walk out and him just be like, oh, it's my dad, you know, and it's mm-hmm. it's quite crazy in that sense. But, you know, it was, I don't know if it's because I was just tired, that kind of thing, you know, up all night of the sun. And I was like, right, let's do it. And I just decided to get back into it. So when, obviously, I was just constantly waiting out, you know, for training schools to reopen and stuff like that again. So I started getting myself into a bit of shape. And I did a show for uh, EWW Pro Wrestling, who I work for now uh, in Hastings, last October. And the pictures what came out, I was not happy with how I looked at all. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just like this is the worst I've ever looked in a wrestling ring or I look big, I look strong, but I just look overweight. You know, it's not how I want to look. Yeah. And uh, I just spoke to their head promoter and I was like, what's the next shows? Like it's in March, which was the other week. Um, And that's when I contacted uh, an IFBB pro, uh, John Lofthouse, who's a bodybuilding coach. Mm -hmm. And um, I just said to him, look, this is what I need to do, man. I was like, I need to do something. So, I mean, I've not done it all on my own. I've got a coach um, who keeps me accountable, does all my plans for me and stuff. But um, I'm the one who's got to do the hard work at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just I just had to get myself in shape, you know. And although I'm 30, I say I'm 32 next month, the thing with me is I, I'll always want to be up there as the best person, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, but when I say that in regards to, I want to look at myself and be happy, not yeah. other people look at me and be like, yeah, but Mitch, you're this big guy, you're this, you're this, you're this. I want to look at me and be like, I'm happy with the way I look. So that was the main reason why I did it. You know, I had to, I had to get myself in shape because I just was not happy, you know? Yeah. And I'm glad that it inspires you as well, because that's why I put these posts up. You know, I put them up for self-confidence for myself, mm-hmm. you know, although I'm a big guy, people might think I'm like this super confident dude, which I'm not. Like, you know, there's a lot of people out there just like me, like, and I do it because you do like it when people say to you, oh, bloody hell, Mitch, you look great. You know, you're smashing it. But at the same time, I do it because if I've got to step out there in front of a lot of people in a wrestling ring, I want people to have seen me beforehand just so I've got that tiny bit of confidence. Otherwise, I'm going to be standing behind the curtain absolutely shaking, Yeah, you know, so... Yeah, but yeah, I'm glad it inspires other people as well. It's a big thing for me. It, it really does. And at some time, you know, you, when you take the phone, you upload it. How much self doubt is there? You're thinking, oh, I shouldn't have done. Mate, it's massive. Like it's, I am. Um, I've got one. Like I've got a couple of really close friends in wrestling who I talk to every day. Yeah. And before I send anything, other than my coach, I'll always send the pictures to them. Mm-hmm. And I always just say, like, you know, what do you think? What do you reckon? And sometimes they'll come back with like, ah, oh, like fair play, smashing it. Like, but then sometimes you're a bit like, oh, do they really mean that? Or are they just saying it to me? You know, but this is just me, you know, yeah. this is just me. And it's not until you actually click post and then you're just, once you get past the first few, send to this page for DMs, all that kind of stupid crap yeah, yeah. on Instagram. <laughs> uh, yeah, which does my head in. Yeah. Um, you obviously then get a lot of, you know, genuine comments from people and it's nice. And it's just... <sighs> At the end of the day, it's, it's it's your lifestyle, you know. It's 
I, I plan things around my family as well. You know, I, I eat food, what they eat, but at the same time, I make sure that the other meals, you know, that if everything's done, so it, 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 it creates a balance. Yeah. And uh, that self doubt, as you say, it, it's mad. Like it, is. it is, you know, it's especially if you, I mean, some people do it constantly uh, and I fair play, you know, and that's why now, if you look on my Instagram, I'm trying to do videos of people tra- like myself tra- training I put one out the other day of a full workout I did. Mm-hmm. Um, if you haven't seen it, go and look at it. But um, I did. I'm not doing that for me, although I am. I'm also doing it because I, I've always been that same person. If I can do it, anybody can do it. It's yeah. as simple as that. You don't have to be as strong as me, but you can still go out there and do it. Mm-hmm. I've always been. I've always been a believer of my doors always open to people as well. You know, I've never mm-hmm. like to turn around to somebody and say, "I'm not going to tell you how to do this. I'm not going to tell you how to do this." I have a coach because at the end of the day he's more knowledgeable than me. Yeah. So, you know, he's going to teach me. Um, and I know that he has a coach as well. He's at the top of his game, but he still has a coach. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's a big thing. So um, I used, I went for a stage where for a solid year, I trained with Lewis Barrett in the gym. I mean, Lewis Barrett, half my height. Yeah. You no. Know, and, but he did everything I did. It wasn't the same weight, but he still pushed himself. And, you know, exactly that. I think sometimes we'd walk in the gym and, you could sometimes feel that sense of blimey, he's six foot odd tall. Lewis is like short guy at the end yeah. of the day. Um, and they're training together, but that, that never bothered me at all because I'm like, at the end of the day, man, if you push yourself, that's all I'm bothered about. And I think that's why he kept coming with me because he enjoyed the fact that he could keep pushing himself as well. Yeah. You know, and, and exactly to anybody else who listens to this or who even speaks to me, go and do it, you know, because I don't think some people hate the gym. I absolutely love the gym. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's my, it's, it is my getaway. It's as simple as that, you know, yeah, mine's, and I'm the same. Um, yeah. I, I feel like I can train at home, but I will mm. only give about 30%. When I'm in a yeah. gym, I've got my earphones or my AirPods in. Yeah. I can't, I just cut the rest of the world out and just yeah. try and get on it. Um, exactly the same with me, mate. It's a case of, as literally I'll put my head, I'll put my, uh, my headphones in my AirPods as soon as I leave the front door. Right, and I'll I'll put this is like a bit of a superstition for me. I'll put my workout playlist on as I get in the car, so that the drive is literally five ten minutes. So that drive, I'm already in the zone, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So I walk in, tap my fob, go into my little walk on the treadmill just to make sure I'm in the zone, and I just get it done. Yeah, and I do that all the time because I get a feeling of if I don't, I'm not going to be in like ready to do it, sort of thing. So you know, just just little things again, you know, help massively. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you spoke about Lewis Barrett, uh, but he's been mentioned a few times. So I'll start yeah. charging him for these little plugs. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, how was it tagging with him for how many times have you tagged with him? Was it just the once or? Um, I've worked against him. Mm-hmm. Um, that was in March, not the month March, the area March or yeah. by Peterborough, whatever yeah. that is. Um, I can, the only one I can remember tagging with him was in uh, like over Reading way, but we worked against Oli Peace and Jack Chevrolet. Yeah, so that was um, the match I watched uh, last. Is night. that when I yeah when yeah. I turned on him at the end? Mm-hmm. Is it when um, our entrance I walk out and then he walks out after yeah, me? Is that, yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the match I can think of. Yeah, yeah, yeah like Doug Rung, I love Lewis. He's a, he's a great lad. Um, we've we've had some good laughs together on the road. Believe it or not, we've had some good laughs in the gym. Um, and yeah, he's he's a cool guy. He he loves his wrestling, bless him. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I, I never say a bad word about him. He's the most he's one he's one of the most genuine guys I know. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a cool dude. I mean, I met him. So I met him once or twice. It was weird. So I do a, a wrestling podcast um, with a gr- company called Rebellious Noise, and yeah. basically we kind of like predict. We do a prediction and review of all the WWE shows, mm-hmm. and I kind of half do it with the AEW because obviously, as you know, there's only I think I only do like one one pay per view per quarter or something. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we kind of do predictions, reviews, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and Lewis was randomly on one of the videos, and um, and I could look, and I was like, oh, I, I know him, but I'm so used to seeing people <laughs> in wrestling gear that it yeah. took me a minute to think of who he was. Um, yeah. And he, he, he's a bit like a Clark Kent. Just that, <laughs> he, he really is. He disappeared. <laughs> yeah, he, like, it's, just, it's just everything about him. You know, uh, he's one minute he's there and he's putting a ring up and he's just. You just don't expect it. And all of a sudden, he goes away, goes, gets changed, comes back, and that's Lewis Barrett, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. it's, it's so, so weird. Yeah. You know, he's got his yeah, he, identity. He, 
when he's when he needs to be his gimmick, he's his gimmick. Yeah. He um I took Lewis before to Brookside with me. Uh, right. He came he came to do a training session there. And he did really well, and they really enjoyed him being up there as well. And he, he, he as you say, he uh, I can remember a lot of guys coming up to me and saying like. For, a, for such a small guy, he's like, his strength and that was really good. And, you know, he moves around the ring quite well. And yeah, I, I've always said that Lewis could do a lot more than if he wanted to. It's just up to him to go and do it, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was very weird seeing that. Um, so how do you find, when it comes to wrestling, do you have a specific, do you rather, would you rather work with another big guy so it's just like hard-hitting moves or a smaller guy? Do you have a preference? Um, I do. I do like working with bigger guys. Um, but... Um, uh, I, I don't know how to say. It. I'm I'm not really the spot fest kind of wrestler, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Where there's loads of things going on all at once. Um, I'm a bit of that less is more kind yeah. of look on things. Um, I do like working big guys. I like the strength. I like the power. Um, but I do also like working with guys who you can do big moves to, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it's um, I, I I don't really have too much of a preference. I just as long as they're not going to turn up and expect to a smaller guy one to f four of me, let's just say that, or mm. you know, just uh, want to, something what just you just would not do. Yeah, you know, um, then yeah, I'm 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 willing to work with them. You know, it's 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 not that I'm not willing to work. I mean, it's just a case where I will happily just turn around and say no. Yeah, like you know that that just ain't going to happen. Um, so. Um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much pretty much open to anything. I do like the power though. The power is always good. Mm-hmm. So you talk about uh, power. Do you have anyone from? I guess you first. So you're you're 32. So you're around about my age. I'm 31. Um, yeah. So you grew up watching. I'm assuming. Did you watch WCW on Channel Five? Um, or was you I watched the that... WWF guy. I was always a WWF. I started watching literally just as Austin took the title from Michaels. Right, uh, the Mike Tyson, yeah, uh, yeah. Bit. literally just after that, I started watching. So I watched the massive build up to uh, the I Quit matches with the Rock and Mankind, uh, Austin, the Rock at fifth WrestleMania fifteen. I was like that build up. That's when yeah, I started yeah. watching um, WCW. I'd watch it on a Friday night. Six was it six o'clock Channel Five something yeah, yeah. like that. <laughs> um, and I, I won't really be into it though. I could, I couldn't. I'd always be looking forward to 10 o'clock Sky Sports 3 Friday night. You know what I mean? Mate, yeah. that's what I mean. I know exactly when it was on. Yeah. yeah um, right. And uh, yeah, so I just, that, that'd be my little warm up. I, I didn't even have a clue who people was, you know, I just didn't even get that interested into it that mm-hmm. I, because WWF was so powerful at the time. I just thought there was just, I could have said that with WCW was a little, a small promotion compared to WWF. Yeah. That's how I looked at it. You know what I mean? So I was always a WWF guy, definitely. Yeah. Um, I was, so I was always a WWF guy. Um, yeah. But my first, so the first, very first match I ever watched was um, Eddie Guerrero versus Rey Mysterio at Halloween Havoc. Uh, oh, nice. 97. Okay. Um, so when you get a given a match like that to watch your first thing, because they were both luchas at the time, um, you know, Eddie mm. was a lot smaller. Was um was Ray in a mask then? Or was he Ray Ray was in a mask. Junior? He was uh what? he was the uh it was the Panther, so he was all in purple. All oh, right, okay, yeah. Um, yeah. if you haven't seen the match, I do recommend it. Even though you're okay, a big yeah. guy, but um, yeah. oh, it's a phenomenal match. I do like watching wrestling matches as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that for me was like I was just inspired, but I just thought Rey Mysterio was like a Power Ranger. You know, that was like '97. So I grew up watching Power Rangers, Ninja Turtles. So for me, that was like what I enjoyed watching come to life in a wrestling ring. Yeah. Um, so I, f- I fell in love with Luchador wrestling. It was only then going to kind of see them transition over to WWF, you yeah. know, and that's when I really got into it. Um, so that was 97 for me. When was your first wrestling match? Like when you first, what was the first match you remember watching? The, the first, I can't remember the first match I remember watching, but the first match that always comes into my head when I think about it is going back to the um I don't know if this was after WrestleMania 15 but I can always just remember when they put Stone Cold on the sacrifice the Ministry of Darkness right. that Monday night raw um obviously Friday night in mm-hmm. the UK but for some reason every time I th- I always just can't think anything past that I can't remember if that was past WrestleMania 15 but it just always sticks in my head as like the main thing where I just thought Jesus Christ, like, what's going on here? So I think, you know, um, and bear in mind, I had watched the I Quit match. 
So I used to watch them with my friend. He, because uh, I was only a kid at the time, like I used to live with my nan and granddad. They didn't want me watching the the pay per views. Like I weren't allowed to stay up. So uh, my mate, he'd always record them. Then we'd go around his other Monday afternoon after school and watch them. Right. Um, and I can always remember say the old quick match with a steel chair to mankind's head, just constantly. But I think that's what I started. I think that's what grasped me. The 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 violence, you know, yeah. uh, as a young kid, like watching stuff like that as well. But um, I, I always got drawn straight to um, the people. I always got drawn straight to was DX. I love the uh, I love the suck it chants, you know, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And, um, but I can't actually remember what my first match was. But for some reason, that sacrifice with Stone Cold when he's up, when he's risen and he's held up, it just for some reason that all just always sticks in my head as the the first thing I can remember. I don't know why it just did. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's a good photo, though, isn't it? It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, imagery. yeah. Um, yeah. So the, one of the first, so I remember watching a bit of WCW. My cousin was yeah. always the WWF guy, so I kind of started transitioning. And if you remember, Channel Four used to show the pay per views, but they had adverts. Oh in, yeah, so they they'd go off at like ten to three in the morning, like uh, yeah. ten to five in the morning or something like that. I uh, can remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, he recorded uh, the. Wrestle, uh, it was, no, it was Royal Rumble 2000. So we had uh, the rock, that was the moment the rock won by throwing Big Show over the top. Yep, yeah, I remember uh, that fair, Madison Square Garden. Yeah, yeah, the first tables match which, with Hardy's Dudley. Which is where my most favorite wrestling match of all time is with Triple Cat- H and Cactus Jack. What a match! Yeah. Is that's that's my, my top three. My favorite wrestling match of all time. Wow, yeah, is there what is it? What is it that's so special about that? Triple H is my most favorite wrestler. Mm hmm. I've loved him all. I've always liked Triple H, um, and I don't know. I just, I just think it's a great match. Like everything, it's got everything. Even when the Rock runs out with a steel chair and hits him out, like it just, it just linked everything. It was just, it was really well told. Yeah. Um, and you know, they brought out Cactus Jack in all his glory with the, you know, the, the tax. Uh, he took all, you know, his uh, his signature elbow drop off the off the apron onto, you know, it just it just done everything. What it showed me that Triple H could be like the Attitude Era, like at the top of the game. That match, yeah. Like it was really when you first saw Triple H take it to another level. I think, mm-hmm. and I think I think Mick Mick Foley brought that out of him really well. Yeah, because it was right about as you said, like so Triple H had been champion for a little while. I yeah, can't, I can't remember the because that was the January of two thousand. So what happened mm. in ninety nine would have been the build for that. But yeah, I mean, because if you remember, go back a couple of years before that, there were. It was like Hunter Hearst Helmsley versus Rocky Maivia. And, you know, they were doing, yeah. like, IC championship matches and who was that next guy, you know? Um, yeah. But you're right. I think Man- uh, or Foley kind of elevated Triple H, who then elevated The Rock. Austin kind yeah. of come back in 2001. Yeah. So you, all of a sudden, we had, like, these four or five guys and then you had Undertaker and Kane into the mix and then you get, like, this Armageddon match of 2000. That was yeah. mental, you know? Um but yeah, for me, I always say WWF's peak moment for me was 2000. That whole year was a back-to-back perfect pay-per-views. Yeah. Um, I think I think the only thing with, I don't know if it's just me being critical with loving that match so much. I then found the No Way Out, Hell in a Cell and the WrestleMania 4 way mm-hmm. a bit of a letdown because I just felt like the, the street fight was just so good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I just felt like I, I, I was on a come down then, if that made sense, <laughs> where I need to be going up. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. But that's just, that's just, maybe that just, that's just me. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That does make sense. Yeah. Um, so in your own, would you ever do uh, a match in the style of that uh, Street Fight Triple H and Cactus Jack done? Would you? Yeah, I did it. If you go on YouTube mm-hmm. uh, on, and type in Austin Hyde versus Mitch Davis. Right. Uh, it was for the uh, Dropkicks rest DKW British Heavyweight title and their Chaos title, which I won. Um, no spoilers there, but <laughs> yeah, that's a spoiler. Um, and we did at the Brentford, Brentwood Theatre, we did a, uh, a no old barred hardcore fight. And we used, oh, you name it, we used it, you know. Um, and that's where I took that big bump, like I said earlier on. Yeah. Uh, if you watch it from the top row, I take it right to the outside, through a table, onto a concrete floor. Um <laughs> Front flip bump as well onto oh, wow. my back. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was mental. But that was uh, also Jamie's Austin's uh, retirement match. So mm-hmm. to be able to see him out that way it was great. Um, but yeah, if you go on YouTube and type that in, you can watch the whole match. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's a good watch. I'm proud of that match as well. I got seriously injured from that. Yeah. Uh, 
that's when I was talking about you think that it's a good idea and then it's good at the time and then when <laughs> later on a few days later it's it's not great um yeah. but yeah you, you can go and watch that and uh, yeah I've done it before um would you do it again that's the question um I think so yeah I yeah. think so who, um, who like I said mind? it has to make sense okay you know um I, I don't really know what I have in mind um anybody who can take a beat in a well, I think it's probably fair, you know. Um, anybody who is is willing to to go at, go after it, you know what I mean. Like at the end of the day, like me and Jamie in that match, we knew there was two titles on for help on, on the line. I had one, uh, he had one. We was like unifying them, and it it was just a case of like the the loser leaves drop kicks. DKW it's now called, and um, mm-hmm. you know neither of us want to lose. Let's let's go and do it, you know and. Yeah. And we did. We went kendo sticks, tables, chairs, uh, drop kicks, wrestling signs, raptor, <laughs> like <laughs> everything, everything we could find, we used. And bottle of water. I can remember I took a drink off one of the fans, right. and it was rank, so I spat it back in his face. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that was good. If you watch it back, you, that, that's quite funny. Um, you know, it's just 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 silly little things, you know. But I'd definitely do it again if that person is willing to. Uh, realize that i'm not going to go easy on them Mm -hmm. Mm. okay so where you're at at the moment uh with wrestling so you've said you've just come back um that was you said so march was it did you say october was my first match back right um and that was was that a tag team match yes a tag team tournament match yeah right yeah Um, so how did how did you feel coming straight back in and going into a, a tag team match did you would you prefer that uh no (laughs) <laughs> right okay no uh, i'm not a tag team wrestler um mm-hmm. i don't mind working them of course you know in my opinion that can be quite easy because you're not you although you're working from the apron when you're not in the ring you know working with the crowd and stuff you know you do you do get the breather um but uh in regards to tag team wrestling people out there love tag team wrestling i personally think i'm a solo wrestler yeah. you know um some people might think different that, that's up to them but um we are now no longer in that tag team mm-hmm. because in March I ended it. Yeah, I see. <laughs> uh, you know, I turned on him, you know, it's as simple as that. He lost me in the match. He ain't, uh, I should be a tag team champion at the end of the day, but I'm not uh, because of him. So I ended that. Um, but um, I'm going to go on a solo run now um, and I aim to get back to the top to where I think I was before I gave it all up, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so as you said, you ended it, so I don't want to kind of peek behind a curtain. Um, but I'm assuming you're going down. Is it a hill route that you're now going down? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I don't know why but everybody says I'm, I look really angry all the time, but I'm not, you know, <laughs> clearly, <laughs> um, clearly, no, you're um, smiling. yeah, I think, I think I play, um, I say play, I think, I think I work a good heel character. Um, the thing with me is my gimmick is I am the wolf Mitch Davis, mm-hmm. um, it's who I am, you know. I'm I'm not somebody trying to be a wolf. I'm I'm legit from Wolverhampton. Yeah, I'm a big Wolves fan. Um, I've got a beard, <laughs> <laughs> um, and my view on it is, I'm not trying to be a character. I'm trying to be somebody who people can believe, if that makes it like get yeah. on board with, um, and. Um, I think when I worked, I can always remember when I worked for like DKW and WrestleForce and stuff like that, I'd be a villain, but I would have the whole crowd chanting, wolf, wolf, wolf. And you're standing there and you're a bit like, these ain't meant to be doing this. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But they're just, again, back to that WrestleForce entrance, people just, I don't know, they people just like to cheer for me in a way. So I think being a villain, I mean, that last show, um, when I turn on him, I mean, there was like album, I think it was like close to 900 people in the audience. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, literally every single one of them booed me out of the room, calling me. You, <laughs> people on the back row were standing up and calling me like the bad words. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know. And like, I'm watching and I'm just got, I got to the back and I'm just like, wow. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, yeah, I, th- I don't know. I, I think I can resonate and I think the heel character works with me. I think I could be a baby, but at the same time, um, I just, I don't know, I'm big and angry at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? It's, you know? Do you find it hard? Um, so when you was the, the face, yeah, as you said that you had the fans screaming for you, did you find it hard to deliver as a face knowing that you're like 
six four, and like you're a big guy. Well, that's the thing. It was it was a case of um, in drop kicks. I was I was always the bad guy, right? But people wanted to still cheer for me. And in regards to, I was just a bit like I'm not supposed to be that guy. Yeah. But yeah. people just, you know, they just link on to I mean, as you say, like on my Instagram post, I'll preach the wolf pack all the time, you know, um, and stuff like that. And I, I don't know, people just, it's not the fact that it's hard to work. It's just a case of people used to enjoy seeing me hurt people. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's just, it is where it is. And it's a bit like, well, I can, what else do you want me to do? So, you know, I'm, I'm doing my job. I'm being the bad guy. And it's getting over, you know, so, you know, it's, it just is where it is. And in regards to, I do whatever I could to make the baby face get cheered. Don't get me wrong. When I beat Austin, I got booed out the building, which is exactly what we wanted, yeah. you know? And um, it was more of a case of, but at the start of the match, you'd have half the crowd ch- chanting, Austin, Austin, a bit like the Stone Cold chant. Austin. And then you'd have people like, wolf, wolf, you know what I mean? And we, we managed to build yeah. the, the Austin Wolf, you know what I mean? Like a bit when they do that back and forth. Yeah, you see, yeah, yeah. And we managed to build down. Me and me and Jamie was just looking at each other like, man, this is quite mad. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm meant to be getting booed and it wasn't happening. So I think as long as the audience are invested in the character and they believe what's there, then I don't think it's too much of an issue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um. So you said you probably, would you prefer being a heel though? Because you can just... I don't know. Like I, I think every time I spoke to someone and they say, "Oh, I'm working face for the first time," I'm thinking, "But you got the look of a, uh, you know, you you got the look yeah. of a face. Why? How are you a heel?" And then you see the the way they present themselves in the ring, and you think, "Oh, well, okay, I I get it." And then I've done some commentary for DKW, and I kind of found myself instantly becoming more of like the heelish voiceover for it because yeah. it's so much easier to be. It sounds weird, but in wrestling, it's so much easier to be horrible than it is to be nice. Yeah, mate, that makes sense. <laughs> it is like it is, um, and it's just so easier to for it to roll off the tongue, tongue yeah. as well. You know, like you saying something bad. Um, I think in regards to do I prefer to be heel or face? I prefer to be heel in the ring. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I remember when I went to start work for EWW, uh, Stu, their head promoter, uh, the owner of the business. He when we was doing was doing a bit of training work in the ring that they had, and the first thing he said to me was, "I just absolutely love." your mean face, like the way I look at people and my facial expressions, it was like, they just, it just, it just sells like as a real bad guy sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And obviously that's why I then went down the route with these as being a heel because I could do all the facial expressions and stuff like that. Um, but believe it or not, I love meeting fans. Yeah. Okay. And I, I'm very much not the bad guy when I get to do that. So sometimes I'll walk out, um, and you'll have like a, a little a little kid, bless them, four years old, five years old, and them literally hanging on to their mom and dad because they think I'm going to eat them or something. Yeah. Like, and then I'm like, "Are oh, you all right? Like, do you enjoy the show?" And they're like, eh? "And I'm like <laughs> talking really nice." And I mean, I know it's breaking kayfabe a bit and stuff, but but at the same time, that's where I love it. I'd love to be a baby face and be able to walk out there, and all these people want to sort of come Swarm and speak to, to me. Yeah. You know, I, I have to make the move for them to come and speak to me because they're actually genuinely scared of me, mm-hmm. you know. So, and at the end of the day, wrestling, it's it's an audience thing, you know, it's it's an entertainment show. And um, for them to, it sort of explain, tells me that I've done my job. Yeah. But then I also want them to realise that I'm doing it for them, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's I'll, like a bit I'll, of sweet, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I want them to be. I want them to approach me as well, you know, and come and get my autograph and have pictures with me. Because at the end of the day, that's what I worked for every single day in the gym and stuff, you know, for these people to appreciate me. So I want to be able to appreciate them at the end of the show and just ask them if they've enjoyed it and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know. So yeah, and I think that's that's the baby. I'd enjoy to be a baby face for that reason alone. I can just walk out and everybody, everybody's just like, "Hey, Mitch," blah blah blah, you know, rather than yeah. you know, so. <laughs> So yeah, my son yeah. always. Uh, I took him to a couple of shows here at WrestleForce, um, yeah. and he always gravitates gravitates towards the hills, no matter who it is. Um, I think the only one, the only person that he doesn't like is um, I'm trying to think. Is it is it Voodoo? Oh yeah, 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 it, yeah Voodoo. It, he 
he just doesn't like his makeup. Like he he yeah. terrifies him. I guess if you do a wrestle force, then my son will kind of gravitate towards you as a you know. Well, at least I have one person come right running up to me. <laughs> the thing is, he he won't go up to him. I have to take him to them. But that um, won't be him. That'll be you. Oh well, yeah. But I, yeah. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be great. As you say, I'm gonna, I am going to speak to Ollie again soon. Um, hopefully, I can get a, get a few bookings working with Ollie again. So I do like Ollie. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah. Every show I've been to with Ollie, there's everyone's always on their feet. Yeah. You know, same yeah. as I've been to the DKW shows. Um, I've done the one in Chatham. Uh, I've done some photos for them. And they were just like, Harry McDonald come out and the crowd was just mental. Yeah. You know, um, have you worked with Harry? No, there's so many different guys who were literally just coming onto it as I sort of took my break. Right. Like, I mean, uh, like you got, you got the, uh, your rebellion, your Jack Torino's. Yeah. yeah. Jack yeah, was lovely, only guy. just getting into it. He hadn't, he hadn't done too many wrestling shows. Um, Aiden, well, Taylor, Taylor, mm-hmm. uh, um, I, I got Aiden into it. Uh, oh, wow. I was the guy who actually brought him across. Yeah, uh, I met him this one time, um, and he's done really well. Uh, you know, I, you know, these are good guys. Who I'm happy to see getting booked and doing well, man. Because at the end of the day, you know, they believe in it, you know, and they want to do well. So that's a good thing. And and from the first time I ever saw Jack in training, I can always remember I went straight up to Lucas and I was like, "Who is that guy?" He's like, "Oh, Jack Trino has been coming a few weeks," and I was like, "He's got it." I was like, "He understands it. He knows it. He gets it." Yeah. And I'm just glad that he's actually. He actually gets booked really well now because he's a really, really good worker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a lovely guy as well. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, with a lot of some people that are the people that are listening to something you don't know. So, as a wrestling fan, you kind of just turn up and the ring's there. But yeah, the graft that all these wrestlers that are performing put in just to yeah. put the ring up. I mean, I I got the opportunity to kind of see it unfold, and you know, as I mean, all of a sudden I was doing, I was I was there to do photos. And I thought, all right, I'll just, I'll, I'll just stand back and watch it unfold. And then you instantly kind of, you get involved with grabbing stuff from the ring, grabbing stuff out of the van. Then all of a sudden I was making tea and coffees. And I'm thinking, hang on, what, how how does it, but it's just, it's like a whole family just gets involved and it is, the ring it goes is. up. It, it's so good to see, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, what an experience, you know, seeing like Torino just sitting there and it's like, oh, can we move it this way? You know, and you just think, you wouldn't think wrestlers would be fussy, if you know what I mean. I wouldn't yeah. even call it fussy. It's just they want to make sure it's okay for everyone. You know, the ring went a yeah. bit skewiff and Jack was like, is it safe? Can we check it? You know, yeah. and you just, it's lovely to see that. It is. It's its its crazy, man. Like, pe- people think that um, us wrestlers literally are, we turn up, we do the job, we go away. You know, it's mm-hmm. its not, there's so much more in it. Like, like there really there's is. so, so much in, into it. Uh, pe- like, people who plan the shows, I mean, the shows I do now for AWW, they're so big, you know, they, they take months upon months of planning, you know, and with every promotion, the, uh, the video is what build up these stories and stuff like that, you know, they, they still take time and, you know, the editing and stuff like that. It's, it's such a massive thing. For, it's like me, like I train so hard and then I wrestle for what, 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then I have to go away and do it all like you know try like it's but it's all built to these moments and yeah. you know i think i think you learn a lot about people in those like you've just said not in their character as their actual people as their yeah. actual self yeah. and uh you do you get to chat to people and like i just said to you i want people to be able to know that i'm not some horrible person you know yeah, what i mean yeah. and it, it, and that's like you've just said the same you know you see jack Tree, you know like helping out standing standing there it's it's great to see it is man like because um it's also it's also really shows a lot of people coming through as well that you're going to be doing it all the time yeah you know you're not going to become superstar where you don't have to do it and also you'll learn to respect people a lot more and a lot quicker 100 percent. i mean i think it's, it's really weird when with the word respect in wrestling because I guess from an outsider that kind of gets to see a little bit inside when I'm helping at DKW and stuff. Um, it's only been once or twice, but even on like when we're doing comms, like for commentary and stuff, there's a communication before it. And then there's a group chat that, oh, can you do it like this? Rob tried doing it like this. And, you know, yeah. and it's always, it's uh, constructive, like feedback. There's, then no one ever, if, if you don't like it and they don't like it, and I go, can we try it like this? Like try it this yeah. way. And yeah. no one's ever an asshole about it. Do you know what I mean? No. And then yeah. seeing people out of their gimmick 
and then talking to you and you know being respectful like people were walking in i had never met half of them and they're shaking my hand saying like nice to meet you i mean they yeah. don't have to do that like they don't have to do that at all and you know it's it's so nice to see and you know and it's it's such a community if you know what i mean i've um i've had i had that drilled into me from day one you know the respectability of things especially when i got sent up to brookside i expected to go in there and nobody had a clue i was yeah and when i got there james mason who was taking the seminar and for and they all came up to me and Phil had already told brief them that I was coming up. He already told them what I looked like just so I didn't. And straight. And I was just like, this is exactly what you want. Cause straight away I feel comfortable. Yeah. And then people was coming up to me and shaking my hand, same sort of thing. And, you know, even, I mean, you can ask people who are, if I go to training schools now, I shake everybody's hand once the training session's finished mm-hmm. just to say, well done, you did well today, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Instead of just going, oh, let's just walk off. I, I will walk up to every single person, whether it be a coach, whether it be, Somebody just sitting and watching, you know, it's like, well, oh, I hope you enjoyed that. And it's just something what I just, I've just had drilled into me and I always do it. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I'd walked in, I walked in with, uh, so I walked in with Ryan and Matt Ball. Uh, I got a lift with okay. them. Uh, yeah. The people that I knew was Lucas and Dan. Um, yeah. So, obviously, Dan does the the, um, the MC and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, I, I knew them. I don't think I know Dan. Do you not know Dan? Okay. Um, if, if you go to a DKW show, you can't miss him. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I knew them, and that was the reason why I was helping uh, for the show. Uh, and I was like, I went and said hello to them, and I met Jack, and I was just saying, I was like, I want to say hello, but I don't want to say hello awkwardly. Yeah. And, and I was just looking, and he was like, Are "You alright?" I was like, "Yeah, I've never met you. What's your name?" And I didn't want to be rude. And he was like, hey, "It's Jack." And you know, sometimes people think, "Well, you should know me." Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And he was like, oh, I'm Jack. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm doing a photography. And he was like, oh, great. You know, um, he said, if you need me for anything or if I need me to be... And all of a sudden, I had a conversation with a guy that I'd never met about the best angles to get in the ring. And, yeah. you know, it, it's just so nice to see. You know, Jack is a lovely, lovely That's guy. That's what I said to you about Jack. As soon, as soon as I first done a training session with Jack, I just knew that he understood it straight away. Mm-hmm. Like, he just knew it. You know, he just, his feel for it was great. And... You, you don't come across people like that often, to be fair. And like some people have said about me, some people haven't. But at the same time, Jack was just one. Of, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say anything against Jack in that manner. Like he just knows the wrestling business. Yeah. And I think you do. You do get those gems what come along every now and then who just it just clicks. And he's one of those. Yeah. I he's mean, it seems boy. like he's passing it on to others because. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've met a couple of a couple of other people at the show. Um, you know, and they were they were talking. All of a sudden, I think the minute you see someone talking to one person, they kind of gravitate over because you're talking to that person, and yeah. that really helped with me knowing all the other guys that are on the show. Yeah, um, especially Lewis. But then he kind of just come up to me, and I was talking to Lucas. You know, and he was like, "Don't want to cut you off. <laughs> we're sorting something." And uh, I was like, "No, that's fine." And then he come over and apologize. I was like, "You don't need to apologize. Like, you're 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 getting ready to wrestle. Like, <laughs> you know." Uh, I'm just a guy standing here. It, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's really nice uh, to see that. Have you got any wrestling uh, car drive stories? Because the most random thing that's happened, or are you a more more of a just drive and go home, like get there, get back? Um, uh, to be honest with you, a lot of the time I've been, uh, I've I've drove myself uh, for the simple reason I, I like the time I drive from work or mm-hmm. something like that. You know what I mean? So I just go straight there. Um, I, Top of my head, where I can try and sort of link it to this with like Lewis Barrett and stuff like that. Um, we did it's, when I wrestled against him. Actually, obviously, uh, Lewis was—I don't know if he's if he is or not anymore—but he's a taxi driver, um, and we all went off in his black cab. Right. Uh, so there's me, um, Jack Cheverell. Do you know who Jack is? No, um, I can't remember what his um, wrestling name was, but um, I think you'd know if you saw a picture of him. Okay. Um, I think Jack Torino might have been there. I can't quite remember. Aiden definitely was Taylor. Taylor, um, and we and Danny Rowe. Do you ever meet Danny Rowe? Uh, I know the name, but I've not met him. He done like a rock gimmick mm-hmm. uh, for a bit um, for DKW. We all went up and we was coming back in the taxi, and then all of a sudden Jack Chevrolet decides I'm going to get travel sick. <laughs> so, like, bear in mind, Lewis's taxi is like. Um, 
limited to a certain time uh, speed limit anyway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're driving down the motorway at like 50 mile an hour, like really, really slow. <laughs> Jack's hanging out the window, like just throwing up like everywhere. <laughs> like I'm, I'm crammed up with like, bear in mind, I'm a six foot four dude. I'm crammed up in the back with like five of like four other guys like this. Well, we were holding Jack's legs so we don't actually fall out the window. And, and then it got to a point where he had to like literally sleep on the floor. And I'd just be like to Lewis, how long left? Are we still going over here and half left yet, Mitch? And I'm just like, can't this thing go any quicker? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> it, it felt like we was literally, it felt like a cow could walk down a field oh, quicker wow. than when he was going down his motorway, <laughs> mate. And it was like one o'clock in the morning. It was long and, oh, man. I just got out. The, I come again at the taxi and just go, never again, man. Like, never again. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, that's that's one thing that always comes to my head. But I laugh about it now, but I was not laughing at the time. Yeah, I was I <laughs> incredibly pissed off <laughs> yeah. I mean, as you said you're a big guy and obviously you got well, well i'm assuming you sounded was it five other guys in that taxi as well yeah so the before and in the back were, then, yeah so we had you have the two seats there didn't you and yeah, then you have two, three on the back yeah so there was four with me so five of us in the back and then lewis was driving so six guys yeah, in was... a taxi that only goes 50 that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably did 35 because yeah. of the amount of weight in it as well <laughs> oh mate it was it was it wasn't fun man i can always and with that, I hadn't, I wasn't in the greatest of moves anyway. I hadn't had the greatest of matches with uh, with Lewis, right? So I was a bit, I was a bit peed off with that. So literally everything was like winding me up. Yeah. And then when he starts, I feel sick. I was like, mate, I feel like throwing. I might, I might just leave <laughs> you here. Like, and I was, like, I'll, I'll just drive the taxi myself. Yeah, right. it was uh, it one like of those fun. moments. No, it was, it was terrible, horrible. <laughs> It made it made me question wrestling. I tell you. Oh, okay, but then it's, <laughs> when you talk about it now, it's them stories that you think, oh, what? A, it was so it was so annoying, but it's so stupid. Yeah. You know, but I think sometimes that's that's one of the moments that you'll never forget. That. You no, know, it, no, I won't. <laughs> I won't. It's, it, I, I can't. I can't wipe the smile off my face now yeah. thinking about it, man. It's. It's. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was crazy times. You do have some laughs. I get back sometimes. Just tell my wife about things. And she'd just look at me with the most like peculiar face, and I'm just like, "It happened, all right? It happened." Yeah. You know. So. How does your yeah. wife feel about um, you in wrestling? Not that we'd like to bring personal side of stuff into wrestling as well, but um, you said like she's yeah. supportive when uh, you come back with um, the rope marks and stuff. So, what's her take on it? Is she a wrestling fan? Is she not? Nah, nah. No? She's she's not into it whatsoever. Um, she would prefer it if I didn't do it. Right. That'd probably be the best way of putting it. Um, so basically, when I did the Austin match before, and I said I took that big bump, uh, a few days later when I had to, I literally couldn't walk. Uh, like my back was in bits. I had to have a, like an injection into my back. Uh, it, it wasn't great. Um, and there was a time when I did a wrestling show, and I it was a Sunday night, and I, I didn't get back till about three o'clock in the morning, and I had to get up at five to go to work, and I didn't. Ooh. And I, I basically, and it was just a case of how much did you get paid for that wrestling show? How much have you lost today? Yeah. You know, and it was a case of that, like maybe, because then we were like, thinking about buying a house and stuff. And it was a case of maybe, I think that's sort of what tipped me over the edge a bit to start realizing that my body's getting a bit too damaged here and I'm, I'm losing out on stuff where I shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. And obviously I'm working all the, all the time anyway. And yeah, it just got too much for me. And so I think it's a case of, She'd rather I didn't do it. When I when I decided I wanted to come back, I think because the job I do now is exactly what I'm doing now. I sit at a computer desk at my head, in my yeah. in my office where I'm sitting now, and I think I said to, it's a case of I need a goal. Um, I, I've always been very very driven in that sense where I need a goal where I can work to. So the gyms mean something to me. So the reason why I have a coach and I think she accepted it and maybe I'd, it, it's something to get me out of the house at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, I'm not out of the house all the time anymore. So she accepts it now, but I'm also very mo- a lot more mature now. Like at the end of the day, I've got, I've got a son and that I know not to be doing stupid things. I know to be more safe for myself. Not like I'm always safe with people, but not to do things what, although I want to make the other person look unbelievable. Yeah. Don't be stupid and, think about the consequences where I'm going to come after it for myself. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and I think I've, I've always, I've like risen to that now and I've sort of like got, got more mature to it. So um, yeah, she, she's happy I do it, but as long as I'm happy, then I think she's happy to be honest with you. That's all right. That's good. That's yeah. always what you want to hear. Isn't it? I mean, if it yeah. causes problems, then, you know, it's, 
that makes more problems and so on and so on. But, you know, if she's supportive and, and whatnot, then great. You know, I mean, that's better for you because that puts you in a mindset of, I'm doing this show. I'm going to come back. And she, she's pre-warned of, obviously, from the past of, you know, and the fact that you yeah. said you'd rather, you'd rather be safe all round and not just for the person in the ring. You know, I think that's probably reassuring for her as well. Yeah, you definitely. Know. Last couple of questions. If you could wrestle anyone ever, past, present, or someone that's coming up in the future, obviously in wrestling, who would it be? Um, if I had to pick somebody uh, who I'd love to be in the ring with, uh, I'm probably going to go with my favourite wrestler of all time, Triple H, mm-hmm. um, just just to be in there with him. You know, I'd, I'd probably like freeze and be completely starstruck <laughs> and start shaking and all that, but at the same time, um, I'd, I'd love to do that. If uh, up and coming, um, for shows what are coming up, um, I'm up for wrestling anybody, to be honest with you. I've, I've always wanted to work with the guys who come from where I'm originally from. So you, you like your, your Pete Dunn, your Tyler Bates, stuff like that. And I, mean, I mean, I know that's probably never going to happen, but at the same time... Never say never. Just, yeah, never say never. But at the same time, I mean, I wrestled James Mason, you know, that's something I never thought I'd have done, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, just some, some people like that, just to just have a bit of the banter of being back with people from where I'm from, if that makes sense, you know, just, I think, yeah, I think I'd enjoy something like that. Okay. Um, and what about past? So let's say a wrestler that's uh, no longer with us. Um, yeah. who it doesn't have to be UK based. It can be UK based. Is there anyone in particular? Um, on the fact that I've met him mm-hmm. and great worker anyway, I'd probably say Scott Hall. <laughs> that'd be, uh, you know, that'd be something spectacular. Yeah. You know? Big dudes. Uh, Great character, great psychology, uh, knows how to work a big character, can offer great advice. Mm-hmm. Um, and just generally speaking to him when I did, whether it was for, just for that five minutes, you know, I, I sort of got that rapport for him that I, I could, you know, he, he he would be a decent guy to be in there with. So, um, yeah, I think I'd, I'd probably go Scott Hall. Okay. And last question, favourite match of all time? What I've been in. Or... Uh, so we'll do, I guess... Because you kind of spoke on your the Catcher's Chat Triple H one, so the favourite match that you've been in of all time? Um, so, uh, but probably the Austin Hyde um, with against me that no holds barred match I had with him right. was a really good one. It was really good. Um, I've I've been in quite a few. I mean, um, I I did. I go back to it. I did like that Rumble where you saw me just just on the. It was no. It was short. It was sweet. It was it was a lot of fun. You know, I got to do some really big moves in there. Um, and we did a good ending with Lewis Howley uh, mm-hmm. at the end, uh, where he tried to nick the title off me, um, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I um yeah, I think I think something like that. That Austin Idol always stands out for me because I did things what I didn't think I was ever gonna do. Right. You know, so uh, I, I, I did, and I did it for him, to be fair, you know. Mm-hmm. I wanted him to go out. I knew he was retiring at the end of the day. I, I wanted him to go out with a with a bang and the fact that I walked through the curtain, I can always remember walking through the curtain. Lewis was waiting for me, Lewis Barrett and Danny Rowe. And I just dropped to my knees because I was in so much pain. Right. With my, my back from that bump. I was just like, and I can remember we all went to McDonald's after it. And Taylor, <laughs> Taylor S, like that Jack, they was already in there and I couldn't walk. Like they literally oh, wow. carried me in. Like, and, <laughs> and everybody was like, oh, you still working the gimmick? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm literally like, I mean, I'm in some serious <laughs> pain here. And I was just, like, I'm just sitting down like, eating a McDonald's like kind of you know what I mean I was, I was in a bad way but yeah I'd probably say that that, that always comes into my head so I really enjoyed doing that okay um, yeah I think that's it you know um, where can we find you are you a, obviously we know you're an Instagram guy Twitter are you, are you a Twitter user uh, yeah so um, Instagram's more for my wrestling stuff so Instagram would be Mitch Davis 12 mm-hmm. um, my Twitter is if you like want to see me moaning about football you can go I mean my Twitter which is Mitch Davis underscore one uh, I, d- I don't really post much wrestling stuff on there. Um, I like to just moan about Wolves on there yeah. pretty much and my football stuff and how crap we are pretty much. Uh, <laughs> and my a West Ham what... fan, don't worry. Yeah. Oh, mate. <laughs> well, I'm hoping we can beat you to Europe, but I, I don't think we will. <laughs> um, and then uh, my Facebook is Mitch Davis. Uh, and it's just, yeah, a picture of me, my wife and my son on there. So, yeah, add me up. I will, I will accept you. You know, if you, you know, I'm not one of the, these guys who just looked at your profile and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I will uh, I'll follow mm-hmm. you. Oh, yeah, I'll accept you. So, yeah, go and catch me on there. And in regards to merchandise, 
I have a new batch of all. I've completely rebranded the Wolf Pack. I've seen. So yeah, you've seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, so all of that is on order, and as soon as all that comes in, I will be putting them up for sale. Probably be directly from myself for now, but until I know an actual website where I can sell them, um, which might they will probably go on the EWW web website mm-hmm. uh, because i'll be direct to them but we'll see um and then uh yeah people can get things from me from there i've also got uh autographic photos of myself which you've seen and also posters a free posters. so if there's anybody out there with posters still on their wall um, uh, i've got one from cold cabal don't you worry <laughs> yeah i don't know i'm sure you can find some space for my face to go uh, on. Uh, we can move i've got we can move becky lynch i can see her face <laughs> uh I'm the man now, Becky. Yeah, right. uh, yes. But yeah, um, so if you just follow me up and you'll see many links on my social media is where you can buy stuff from me from, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, mm. Are you going to be doing any more um, gyms related stuff? Have you got something separate that you're going to be doing for gym on Instagram? You're going to make a like, or. So um, I've made it my thing now. Um, I'm going to start, like you said, about the inspiration thing. I'm going to start recording little working sets of my workouts. So. Um, although it's not the full workout, every single exercise I do, I'm going to record one of those sets just so people can actually see that the full workout that I do actually do, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it can, yeah, sort of inspire people. At the end of the day, there's exercises out there what people don't know about, what yeah, exactly. I get told by my coach. Uh, so even if it's just uh, general momentum of timing of things, um, general form, stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm you know my my instagram's not private so anybody can go in there and have a look mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah i'll definitely be uploading i'm i'm doing a leg day today actually so um i'll get i'll get some leg leg exercises up and then people can see that as well lovely anything else you want to touch on before we uh wind down uh no i think i'm all good all right thanks